why is it immoral to eat bacon and not immoral to eat beef or poultry? Because God says pork is not to be eaten. See, that's what? the thing. You're talking to Muslims, bro. So we're going to have a different stand. We're going to have our standard. And we can't see, look, we can't push our way. It's incumbent on us. Right. We cannot. And uh, as well. So there's we cannot compel you. There's no compulsion into to being a Muslim. The idea of Islam is that you are willfully submitting to a the only deity worthy of worship. Okay. And but I will first, say that as commanded. Just like Hamza said, not- bro. First, Hamza said we have to get you to acknowledge that there is only one deity worthy of worship, which is the true deity, only God in existence. Right. Until we do that, anything that we tell you is moot. Uh, there's someone called Darren. Got to bring Darren on it. That guy. Ugh. Let's see. I you swear, know, Darren, he is red, a redhead. That's it. I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> he's overwhelmed me now. <laughs> Oops, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Let's look at a second. So, uh, um, Darren. All right. Yeah, can you guys hear me all right? All right, you all right? Yeah, you've been sucking on a balloon or what? No, no, all right. I think he's got a voice change. Oh, um, oh, are you no. guys all uh, Muslims? Yes. Okay. And you said you're all from um, non-religious backgrounds as well, right? Yes. Or non-Muslim backgrounds? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was raised um, an atheist. Uh, sorry, okay. not an atheist. I was raised um, a Christian. A what? And uh, I was raised a Christian. A Christian, okay. And I've sort of been in and out of the church for most of my life. Uh, but only in the last few years, um, I've sort of fully left and kept to myself in the church. I had a very good uh, pastor who um, directed me to some sources, which led me out. So I don't agree with the uh, the Christians here. I don't actually know that much about Islam, so I'm interested in hearing and learning more about it. Um, I'm, I guess, a man of science. Um, you know, I don't really know exactly all of the answers because science doesn't know all of the answers. Um, I'm just interested to learn more and really hear what you guys have to say. I'll um, debate with you guys if you have any questions to ask about what I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, Great, man. Well, welcome aboard. Um, Very simply put, uh, we believe that Islam is uh, the truth. We believe we're upon the truth. Uh, We believe that there is one God and uh, only he is worthy of worship. Uh, we believe that multiple messengers were sent throughout time. So everything from Adam, Moses, Noah, uh, David, Solomon, you name it, all the prophets that can, I'm sure you probably, you know, had a chance of uh, reading yeah, about. Somebody, yeah. We believe that they all had the message of pure monotheism to worship this deity. And we believe that uh, Islam, which means the willful submission, willful and peaceful submission to this deity, is the best way of life, uh, not only for this current temporal life, but also for the hereafter. Okay. That's, that's so the, I, the My first question for you, I guess, is um, also um, this is a slight uh, voice changer. It's exacerbated by my microphone. I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Dead or alive, you can't it shouldn't be this low. Why are you using a voice changer? Um, a few reasons. I'm kind of big on privacy. Um, also, <clears throat> family don't really like me being an atheist. Most all, all, all my family is Christian. Um, no one who I really know in my immediate family is atheist everyone's very 
devout Christian. Um, How old are you? I'm 18. Why? What? So, uh, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. 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 So, uh, you you're an atheist because of Christianity, or you know because you because you you, you realize Christianity is not the truth, so you you've concluded that atheism is true, or do you still believe that there's something out there? There's some. Well, I, as I said, I was brought up Christian, um, but there were several things that didn't ring true for me. The sort of stuff that you've just been uh, uh, talking about now with um, uh, Patrice, was that, I think? Or Patrick? It's, I can't remember what so it's uh, more, more in terms of disproving Christianity rather than disproving a creator. Do you say you, you still you, could, you still believe in a, in a creator? In a, in a in a in a in a cause and a, a creator. Well, there's the in Christianity, there's the the classic um, omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, kind, loving God. That to me didn't work with the reality we observe. We see children suffering every day with cancers and diseases. We see conflict all over the world. World, even outside of humans, we see things like parasitic wasps and horrible fungi so and various different organisms that prey on others and really cause suffering. I don't so see it's more why like what you, what you call this. like the so it more fall in line with like you can't understand why the there is a, a loving God when you see certain things that you perceive to be evil happening. In the world, yeah, I think it was yeah. just um, that if he is all powerful, all knowing, and all loving, you know, he could be too, he could be all powerful and all knowing, but not all loving, and then there's there is suffering. He could be all knowing and all loving, he knows there's suffering, but he's not powerful enough to get rid of it. He could be all powerful and all loving, but he isn't aware of how much suffering there is. Darren. Darren, uh, or he could be the Islamic. Darren, Darren have... you, do, you, do you think you're speaking to Christians or Muslims? No, I know you're Muslim. I, I'm actually, yeah, I'm curious. As I say, like everyone in my immediate family is Christian, so I don't really have um, much viewpoint on Islam. In fact, I've been I've been talking to an Islamic friend um, recently, and I was um, I was asking. And he was asking um, me questions, and um, you know, he said he's not very knowledgeable on it. So he actually sent me a link to your guys' um, show and said, you know, ask your questions here. These guys know a lot more than me. Yeah, for sure. Well, let me. I'll yeah. oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, so what I was going to tell you is, if you turn to um, the second, I don't know if you have a copy of the Quran, but you can certainly look at it online. And I've got it online, uh, one, I think. You got it online? Okay, if you go to chapter 2, verse 30, so this is in Surah Al Baqarah, and I'll just read it in English. It says, Remember when your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place a, a successive authority on earth, they asked Allah, Will you place in it someone who will spread corruption there and shed blood while we glorify your praises and proclaim your holiness? Allah responded, I know what you do not know. Right. So um, a couple things. Yeah, I see. It. Right. So the, the the you know, if you are under the impression that this world is supposed to be the end, then uh, this is where a lot of people go faulty and say, why is there so much suffering? Why is there so much um, corruption? Why is there so much all this stuff? So a couple ways to look at it. First and foremost, you as someone who is not in a position where you're dealing with this type of suffering or strife, right? An opportunity is created for you to actually do good in the world, right? So you have a bunch of people that have the capability to do a bunch of good, but to conduct that good, there needs to be some type of trial or some type of test happening to somebody else, because if everything was just roses and daisies, then we wouldn't get anywhere. Everybody would just be winning. And there would be no test, there would be no Great. trial, there would be no, uh, all these things, right? So 
yeah. the point being is the Islamic position is this is just a temporary form of existence and the hereafter is really what we should be going for. Now, in order to successfully get to the hereafter, we have to earn the mercy of God. And what gets us closer to that mercy is conducting good actions, abiding by his rules, avoiding the prohibitions that he set forth and so on. Okay. okay. So we, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being merciful. We believe in him being loving. We believe in him being just, right? But there needs to be an environment created in order for all of these attributes to be shown to us uh, to some capacity or another, right? So like, for example, if there's somebody out there causing tons of evil and tons of corruption, like let's say if we were to use like Hitler or Mussolini or Genghis Khan or anything like that, right? Okay. There would be no form of fair justice in this world. Rather, that form of fair justice is reserved for the next world. The atrocities still happen in this world. And there is many people that have faced those atrocities, have passed away, and they have either been given the status of martyrdom or have been given ultimate no account or no or, or full reprieve of whatever happened to them in this world. So like, for example, in Islam, we believe that if a child passes away, right, they're guaranteed Jannah, they're guaranteed paradise. And we have a hadith, uh, which are teachings of the Prophet والسلام, that say that there will come a time where a person who had nothing but lu luxuries and pleasures in this world was dipped in the hellfire, just their toe was dipped. And they'll say, I do not have a single memory of a pleasant moment. And likewise, the person that had the most amount of trials, which we believe are the prophets, uh, but someone who was, you know, stricken with poverty, stricken with cancer, stricken with, you know, diabetes, very, had a very, 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 very tough life. I'm talking the worst that you can imagine, that they will be dipped into Jannah, which is paradise. And they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, do you remember any pain or do you remember any suffering that you had? And they'll say, wallahi, I, I don't, which means by God, by your, you know, by your holiness that uh, I've never experienced any type of discomfort in my life. So what I'm trying to illustrate to you is that um, if, if you constantly look at this world as the end all be all, and you think that suffering is bad from the grand scheme of things, right? You're going to be stuck in a state of misery and you're going to be in this cyclical pattern where, you know, you're, you're not going to see a solution. You're not going to see a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing, pain and suffering is also viewed as a good thing. Like, for example, in small measure, when your tooth hurts, right? When your tooth hurts, there may yep. be a, a more serious underlying condition, right? Or when you get a headache, stuff like that, right? You have to go to the doctor, you get an examination exactly. and things kind of proceed forward. But remember, uh, this test that was put here before us is different for every single person. So everybody's journey is entirely their own, right? Yep. So... This is the, this is the, um, what I would like to call the bittersweet thing about life, right? You have, you have a witnessing to all these atrocities, but you may have been put in a position to do something about it. That could be something as simple as raising your hand and saying, you know what, this is going to stop raising your voice, right? Taking action and so on and so on and so on. And if the, if the majority of people in this world followed the guidance that was given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that type of suffering would be reduced almost to a zero, right? Almost to a zero. So that is the Islamic um, kind of position on that, right? But before any of that takes precedent, you have to, before any of that takes into effect, you have to come to the conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, did in fact, God did in fact communicate with us through his messengers and his scriptures and that he it did in fact provide us guidance and that he tells us this is the best way to serve me and to ultimately you're going to you're going to come back to me at the end of your journey until you come to the conclusion of who that god is right and what is the correct way to worship him none of this stuff matters to you suffering doesn't matter to you as an atheist because remember you're just it's just ashes and dust so you're here you know ash to ash dust to dust kind of thing you're here for a time being, you want to procreate, have fun and do whatever you want to do. And then you're going to pass away and then that's it. And, um, you know, if you're cool with that, 
uh, which I recommend that you not be, right? Then we, I need to know kind of where we should start, right? So, you know, where are you kind of at? If you're blaming suffering, but you're in a position of atheism, you have no moral grounds to talk about suffering because everything is just subjective, right? Okay, I, 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 so I think we do have some areas of agreement. You know, an, an amount of pain is, is good, right? If you put your hand on a hot stove top or put your hand in a hot pot of water and you don't feel any pain, you're not going to take the hand out. You're going to get massive burns, you know, a bit of, yeah, a bit of an aching tooth is good. It tells you to go see a dentist and you might not have any worse consequences. Um, no, no, but I think the point being made, sorry. Yeah. If pain didn't exist, see, you, you people think pain's a bad thing, yeah. Yeah. Do you think pain is a bad thing or a good thing, or can be a good thing? I think pain can be a good thing and can be a bad thing. I think unnecessary right. amount. I'll give of you an pain... example. If you didn't suffer pain, and you had a rotting tooth, you wouldn't know your tooth is rotting, and your tooth would no. fall out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you didn't feel pain, yeah. you could put your hand in fire and not realize your hand is in fire and yeah, exactly. burn, your, burn your... So pain is like an indicator, if you like. But we, we, all, we always yeah. associate it with something negative. It's not necessarily something... It's a positive thing because it, it's a warning. You understand? Yeah, no, I understand completely. I'm, I'm not saying... And, and because we, and, and here's the other thing as well. I, sorry, I don't want to derail you, Morris. But it's like, for example, we suffer pain and we don't like it. We don't like it. We don't like pain. That's why we do something about it. You've got a toothache, flip and neck. I need to brush my teeth more. Or exactly. I need to go to the head. I need to stop the pain. Yeah, if you've got a headache, what's causing the pain? You, cause, so pain is the warning, right? But we, we experience this pain. And because we've experienced this pain, when Allah speaks about a hereafter and a hellfire and a punishment, we can kind of... Get, get catch the drift of it yeah and we, we wouldn't want that and the beautiful thing is you see Allah in his wisdom knows what benefits and harms us and he only wants the best for us and he knows what motivates us is only two things punishment and reward that's all that motivates us what am I going to get what's going to happen to me if I don't do it these are the two motivation factors of human beings. So Allah has given you the greatest punishment to avoid and the greatest reward to attain, to pull you to worshipping him. And to worship him is just to obey him, just to do what he says. And he's like, what? So you're, you're saying the only thing I have to do is obey the one who created me and created everything. Well, that makes sense anyway. If, if I believe you created everything, I yeah. should be worshipping you. I should be obeying you. I should be following your guidance. You should be the source of my morality. Do you understand how it works? Oh, I, I agree. I think, yeah. I mean, we... No, no you, you're only 18. You're only 18. Parents. I just wanted to say one more thing, sorry, about this. How human beings, like, for example, if you want the best part of the olive, what do you need to do? Get rid of the you don't like crush it to get the oil yeah okay yeah how, how do you make steel you go put it through the fire yeah yeah so this, this is what human so we human beings we're the same so i'll just use one example i've used it in the past so you're 18 so you won't know this but back in the day there was a little girl called sarah Payne. this was one of the first things i'll be honest with you that made me um when someone used this thing about Sarah Payne, it, it was the first thing that associated Islam and something in my reality. It was the first time religion actually was tangible to me. Okay. But anyway, so she was a little girl and she was coming home from swimming and she got abducted, raped and murdered. Yeah. And she was just off a random yeah. council estate. Her, her mum was just a council estate mum. Her dad was a council estate dad. Her mum now is Baroness. A baroness, yeah? And she got a law passed in the UK called Sarah's Law, which is based upon that if a paedophile is released from prison, that people in the community need to know that they're in their community. It's called Sarah's Law, yeah? This never existed yeah, before. Yeah, I'm aware of it. Yeah, but this only happened because of what happened to a little girl. 
But what happened to her little girl turned her from a council estate mum now into a baroness. So sometimes we go through adversity, yeah. but this is how we grow through adversity. So I'm just trying to, you know, uh, through evil effects uh, or badness or pain. And sometimes it's through, uh, this is how we grow. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Sorry, so to, I, I didn't want to No, no, no. I think, you know, uh, mashallah, you, you said it really well. And, um, you know, Darren, I know we're saying a lot. I definitely want to give you some time to, to speak. But yeah. as I was listening to um, the conversation that you guys were just having, uh, along with what I had said previously, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us an example in the Quran. If you go to chapter 15, verse 39. And the, the beautiful thing about the Quran is... If you really just take some time and spend some time with it, the things that are bothering you the most in life will be most apparent from the Quran because it speaks directly to you, right? At least this is a common denominator that I have had with every single person that I've spoken to, whether it be Revert or somebody that's very interested in Islam. Sincerely. So in the in uh, this is in Surah Al-Hijr. And this is where Satan, or Iblis, we know him as Iblis, is speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you to pay close attention to this because this is, I think, closest to your position, right, when it comes to suffering. It says, uh, Satan says, my Lord... Is this is a specific surah, by the way. Yeah, 1539, so chapter 15, verse 39. And the term of Waitani is actually better translated as you misled me, right? I know that in the, um, if you go to like um, Quran.com, uh, it might say, you know, for allowing me to stray. But if you hover your mouse over and if you look at the uh, Quranic corpus, uh, basically what, what Shaitan or what Iblis is doing here is he is blaming God. And the difference between Adam and Shaitan is Adam blames himself, whereas Shaitan blames God. So what's why I say I think this is kind of ringing a, a vibe close to what's happening with you is because you are refusing to open up the doors of your of of wanting guidance to the capacity. Like you're you're taking certain steps by asking questions, and I really respect you for that. But to actually open up the doors fully, right? You have to get rid of the idea or the notion that God is at fault, okay? And, and he gives us a prime example of this where Iblis says, it's you, you did this. You, mis, you misled me. You took me astray. I was, from the Islamic position, Iblis was a, a very pious worshiper until the creation of Adam and, and then time went by, right? So... What I think you're seeing, all this suffering, and if you associate that with this is now God's fault, you are literally following in the exact footsteps of the devil, according to uh, the Islamic position, uh, from my understanding of this, um, this particular uh, ayah of 1539. So you're treading a, a very like dangerous path because anything and everything that you see, you will... Uh, that's negative, you'll attribute to God. And ironically, there's another portion in the Quran. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the exact uh, chapter right now, but I'll fish it up for you. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when when man pleads out to me and we fix his state, he's he's grateful, right? But then is but then he turns forgetful and then he starts blaming again, right? So why me? Why me? Why is this happening to me? Right. So, you know, I don't know if that's speaking to you at all. I don't want to kind of keep going down the rabbit hole, but does that, what I just said, does it kind of resonate at all? I'm understanding what you're saying. I'm hearing, I'm hearing what you're saying. You know, like if I keep looking at evil and saying this is God's fault, you no, know, that's not what the Quran says. You know, that's that's you said that it take me down the path of the beliefs. Um I wanna sort of go back to what we uh, what you mentioned earlier as like um so you, so as Muslims you have um I think you mentioned as well uh, an afterlife thing similar to the Christian heaven and hell thing, right? 
Sorry, can you repeat what you said? It was really tough to understand. So do you have sort of an ask, an afterlife idea in Islam and like what is what's the proper terminology basically? I want to I want to make sure I'm using the proper terms. Uh, we do have a concept of an afterlife in Islam. Yeah, absolutely. If that's what your question is. And we we were given Yeah, glimpses. yeah, I'm, I'm sort of Yeah, we were given glimpses I'm of asking what, that what, would what, be what like. are the what are the proper terms? What are the proper terms for it? I just I want to make sure I'm using the right terminology. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to call it an afterlife, right? So what do you refer to as, as the, the your equivalent of the Christian heaven? Mm -hmm. So we have Jannah, right? And I don't want to I don't want to equate it to like a Christian heaven because um, our understanding of paradise or our understanding of Jannah is all impurities are now gone. So there's not going to be any jealousy. There's not going to be any envy. There's not going to be any hatred. There's not going to be any. Um, there's not going to be any lack of happiness. Uh, there's not going to be a uh, lack of pleasure. There's not going to be, um, you know, and, and it will perpetually and continually increase. So hopefully that kind sure. of paints a, um, a decent enough picture as to what it's going to be. We have small descriptions. So like, for example, uh, the word Jannah means garden, right? So we have um, gardens with flowing streams. We have uh, fruits of abundance of all sorts, all, all kinds of fruits uh, that are in there. And the reason why, um, the reason why uh, certain analogies are given in the Quran is because of our current status as human beings. So we have like desires and we have, you know, like when you go to like a five star restaurant and you treat yourself uh, very rarely and you have that like really good steak, right? So the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could, uh, could potentially be using fruits as an example is because we won't have like, a, I can't tell you we're going to have like a mouth and teeth, but we will have a concept of taste. Now, how that's going to happen is up to God in the afterlife, right? So when he says fruits, whatever type of sensation that you get from biting into an apple, whether it be sour, juicy, um, sweet, all these things, right? These types of sensations will be there because they're pleasurable. And that pleasure will continue innumerously until the end. There, there's no concept of time anymore. So it's eternity, right? So that is our... So do you have... Yeah. So ahead. you've got Jitna, right? Is that the right pronunciation? Can't keep going on with this. Because yeah. we could go on and on and on. Yeah, we could go on forever, man. And it just becomes pointless. Really well, it doesn't become pointless. Don't get me wrong. There's some information yeah, yeah. that is next level. It's just that I've got yeah. two people waiting. Um, yeah, I think okay, the okay, yeah. important Sorry. thing, Darren, bro, is to... It's not so much as to uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to dangle this carrot in front of you, right? The, the most important thing is to establish that Islam is the truth. And it doesn't matter how many things follow from there. Once you're upon the truth and you realize that it's going to be altering your life for the better now until the end of time, then there's no, there's no, point in us spending endless time in describing of what could be we want to get you to yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know i'm trying to just um ask these you know i'm trying to be courteous and not interrupt or anything no um, no no but the questions but... you're asking uh, fair questions but they're not the questions yeah it's not the question so you're, I, just... you're, 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 you're basically asking us uh how nice is it inside the mansion yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I didn't mean to. Mean that if you're me. My question is that I didn't mean to ask that. I basically am just no, asking. Okay, like, okay. So you, you can ask it. It's not a problem. You have, you have jannah, and then so do you have you have an equivalent of hell, and if so, what's that called? It's called jannah. Just why you use the hell hell hell. horrible hell place you don't want to go. Don't want to. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. it, 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 it so, so if if I live. Uh, what I would consider to be a morally good life. You know, there's um, philo yeah. philosophy from ancient Greece of like, live in a way where if everyone acted like it, we'd all be all right. And the world would be a better place if everyone acted that way, you live in that way. Yeah. So, you know, you do nice things, you act as a moral human being, you, you know, you don't go out killing people, you don't go out doing all, all these morally horrible things, morally horrible yeah. things. 
So you Would don't drink I go to general? You don't drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol personally at all. I no, don't no, really... society don't drink alcohol. You're saying so you don't drink alcohol. You, you, you sex inside of marriage, yeah. If I if I do all of that, but I'm not Muslim, if I don't believe in the right. word of Islam, what then happens? You you potentially go to hell. Yeah, here's uh, so yeah, you we we can't tell you what will happen. So, so what what exactly. we can say is because you you may die upon you may die on your and and turn into a Muslim on like you know the second to last day of your life. We don't know, right? But what we do know is if uh, number one, you have no sense of objective morality, and if we left it to a subjective morality, we'd all be in trouble. So, like for example. I had a conversation while I was out in Turkey with somebody and they were saying the same thing you're saying, you know, the guy was a pilot, really nice guy. I don't want to cause harm onto others. And he's sitting there, you know, and he's got a cigar and he's drinking a drink and stuff like that. And I said, well, how about like your organs? You're causing harm to your organs right now. You're causing harm to yourself. Right. Um, so when you to level the playing field, you have to look at something that could apply to everyone. OK, and subjectivity cannot apply to everyone. You're going to get chaos. So we believe that the objective rules and the conditions uh, are brought down to us from God through his messengers. OK, so what your reward could be is a very healthy life. Let's say you stuck with your st st state of mind and your way of life, right? And you, re you refused alcohol and you refused drugs and you refused extramarital sex and all this other stuff. You're going to have a nice, happy, healthy life. And you're going to, you're going to be very yep. satisfied with yourself to a point. That's now, the plan. Uh huh. That's the plan. Yeah. But at the end, right at the end of it, when your creator asks you, well, did you not seek me out? And did you not hear my message? And did you not? You know, did, didn't you not have a conversation with Morris and Hamza? Like, did you not hear the message of the Quran? And, you know, well, you're not grateful for all that I gave you. Yeah. For all that I gave you, because, dude, we, we believe that our body is a rental. Right. So, like, everything was given to me. My eyesight was given to me. My ability to think was given to me. My ability to taste was given to me. Right. And how who else are you going to be? How are you going to show gratitude for that? If you're going to show gratitude by being a good person, you're not showing gratitude where gratitude is due. So the where it's due is that creator. And that's what he's asking of you. He's asking of you in order to show gratitude for all the things that I've given you. All I'm asking for you to do is worship me in the manner that I commanded to be worshipped. So you can't say, hey, look, I was worshiping you the whole time by being a nice guy and everybody loved me and blah, 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 because he's going to tell you that's not what I said. So you ignored what I said. Do you see how that kind of works? I see. I see. I see how you're saying. Um, I guess my answer to that is like, if I'm living a good life yeah. and, you know, and in most senses, I agree with you guys on what a good life is. I don't drink, you know, don't have sex outside marriage. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I am living the same way that you guys are, I don't do the the worshiping. Then, and then, you know, on you know when I when Allah asks me, you know, why didn't you praise me? Why didn't you worship me? Why you had these conversations with Marissa and Hamza? Why didn't you? why didn't you convert to islam if what i've if the way i've lived and my virtues as a person um of trying to live the best life that i can mm. isn't enough mm -hmm. then no. it's not i don't Look, i don't, Darren, Darren, I don't want a part in that i don't want to Darren. be in that future Darren, where, you know, you know, like somebody who's gone to work at a factory or a job yeah and you're doing the job you still ain't getting paid. <laughs> you just ain't getting paid, mate. It's as simple as that. It's just pointless. I'll tell you why. Because there's three types of people in this world. There are those who are good to the people, kind to their neighbors, giving charity, like after the poor, but completely ignore God and his messengers. And then you've got those who 
um, worship God daily, yeah, praise God, but at the same time are bad to the people, cheat the people, lie to the people, yeah. And then you've got a third category yep. of people who are good to the people and respect God, yeah. The third category is where we try to be. Yeah, the first category being good to the people is irrelevant if you're completely disrespecting the one who created everything. Yeah, and well, you're completely disrespecting the one who created everything by ignoring Allah everything. Huh? I don't believe that Allah created everything. I don't believe in a, in a God believe? at all. Who cares what you believe? I thought this was based upon a principle that God exists and you're a good person and you don't eat pork and you don't drink alcohol and you get married and have children and be a good person and give in charity and such. Yeah, yeah we're working, working our way some, up that, Dan. Do some we're missionary work, work in Africa, saving the, I don't know, um, whatever animals are there. The point is this, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you're, 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 you painted the paradigm, mate, that God exists. You painted the paradigm. That God exists, you're a good person, moral, not eating pork and all that business, yeah? So you can't then, as soon as we come into the paradigm and try to explain it to you, you say, well, I don't believe God exists. Because now you've just shifted paradigms. Right. You're working in a well, paradigm. So now I'm, yeah. so you're like working in a paradigm where God exists. Yeah. And I, I you're a good mean. person. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The issue is, Darren, is you think that I you know yourself better than the creator saying. knows you, bro. That's the issue. So you don't believe God. Not saying, so here's no. the thing, Darren, Darren, Darren. Religion is none of your business at this moment in time, right now. What's your business right now is to determine whether God exists or not. And then when you see if God right. exists or not, and you look at the uh, attributes of God and the power of God, then you'll ask yourself, is this the being that's worthy of my worship? Is this the being that's worthy to, to be the one to be obeyed? This is how you do it. You right. can't come come on, I'm, I'm a good person. Because you don't believe God exists anyway. Who yeah, says you're good? Who first, tells bro. you you're good? Mm. Who is your, what is your, well, if, you can... if there's no God, Darren, what's your moral standard? Who sets your moral anchor? My moral standard is set off of, you know, well, I wouldn't like to be killed. I'm not going to kill people. My moral standard is set off of the society I, 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 around me. That's just your, that's your subjective moral, morality, yeah? That can change. Okay. It can change, yeah. Right, so you have no moral anchor. You just go with the wind. What suits Darren suits Darren. You don't know so the not what suits me, suits me. You don't know everything that's beneficial for you, everything that's harmful for you. You don't know these things. I might like to have more money. I might like to, to be able to... Are, are, are you married, Darren? I might like... Are you married? No. Are you a virgin? No. Right, so yes. you do have sex outside marriage. So why do you have like you're a good guy? What? So you, so you, so what is, this is, this is my point. I'm not married and I'm a virgin. I haven't had sex outside marriage. You said you wasn't, a, you are a virgin. I am a virgin. Oh, you, I thought you said, no, I'm not a virgin. Yeah, sorry, it came through that. No, I am a virgin. Okay, right, okay, fair enough. Oh, sorry, yeah. must have been do, an audience mistake, sorry. Do, do you gamble? Do I gamble? No. So you're not, so you're a virgin, you gam you don't gamble, you don't drink. No. Do you eat, do you eat bacon? I, I do eat pork. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, it seems... pork, pork, but no cigar. So, so it's, See, immoral. I, I don't... it's immoral to eat bacon. Why? Because God says so. Why is it immoral to eat bacon and not immoral to eat beef or poultry? Because God says pork is not to be eaten. See, that's what? the thing. You're talking to Muslims, bro. So we're going to have a different stand. We're going to have our standard. And we can't see, look, we can't push our way. It's incumbent on us. Right. We cannot. And uh, Dean as well. So there's we cannot compel you. There's no compulsion into to being a Muslim. The idea of Islam is that you are willfully submitting to a the only deity worthy of worship. OK. And but I will first, say that as commanded. Just like Hamza way, said, bro. Right. First, Hamza said, we have to get you to acknowledge that there is only one deity worthy of worship, which is the true deity, only God in existence, right? Until we do that, anything that we tell you is moot because you're just going to say things like, well, why is pork worse than beef, right?
So for example, here, I can tell you, Hamza told you what the Quran says. God tells us pork is worse than beef. Now I'm going to tell you a couple of scientific reasons. It's because pork, they eat everything, including fecal matter. They're dead young, right? They're a bottom feeder. They are literally the cleaners of the earth. Okay. Second, their digestive system is not clean. So the secretions and stuff that come out through their flesh is a, uh, is influenced by what they eat. Third, okay. Uh, they are one of the few creatures on the planet that get sexually aroused from watching their partner have intercourse with another pig. Okay. So what there's many lessons in that, but there is no point in me telling you stay away from pork. Cause you're just like, Oh, bacon tastes good. Therefore I'm okay. Right. So th what we need to do first is get you closer to theism and deism and then we can explore which religion or which you know belief is the only true one because there can only be one darren you're not really 18 are you i am 18. really i will i will defend this to the end of the day if i am 18. turn, turn off your voice change yes yeah. You want me to turn off my voice changer? Yeah, turn off your voice changer. Yeah, be straight with us, man. Yeah. We're straight with you. We're on camera. We, you, you know. I will. I, mean, I will we, say we I, naturally look this good. I promise you, there's no filters on. We look. We look really good, man. Part of it is the the uh, you know. You, you want me to turn off the voice changer on the camera? Mm -hmm. I'll do that. You felt we want to hear your voice. I'm more, I'm, more, I'm I'm more than happy to do that. I'll do that right now. If you want to. Go ahead. But, do whatever you feel comfortable doing, man. But we just we want to have I, a heart, I, heart with you, dude. That's all. Uh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take care. Hey, is that off is now? Is he doing it now? Is he out? Yeah, I'm is gonna. He, he's, he's, he's not taking off his filter, is he? And we've got a couple of guests. I'm taking listen. it off. Oh. Whoa! Hey, there he is. Wow! Look at you. Got the beard going. Everything. Oh, you're you're a virgin. Better, no, I'm is, is my voice still weird? Is my voice still weird? No, it doesn't. Man. Oh, like you're like a it's man. way better than that freaking Darth yeah. Vader thing, man. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Nice to meet you. I, I may have overdone a little bit. Hey. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Jeff, too. I will What's say you've been very similar to the patient, respect. Sorry? Your name is Darren or Adam? No, my name's John. All right, John. <laughs> why Why so much confusion? Why Why voice changes yeah, and change your name? Yeah, man. Who, who are you running from? I'm, I'm at a university. That, um, is very particular on um, political correctness and all this stuff. I just want to make sure that I... Out, basically okay, no okay. Bro. we got you don't worry please uh yeah, pick up a copy of the quran bro the clear quran uh if you want you can drop um you can send hamza an email or you can send me an email dawadigest at gmail.com we'll get you a, a free copy of the quran um we just be all that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all that god asks of you is just sincerity if you ask for sincerity and you're sincere, or if you if you stand upon being sincere and you ask for sincere guidance, you will get it, man. That that's that's it. It's as simple as that. And naturally, you can utilize myself or Hamza as a resource to whatever capacity you wish. Um, you know. Look, my advice to you, John, is: Do you know my channel yet? This I've channel. just been sent this. I've just been sent this by a friend. I, I I'm oh, aware of really, channel. Really, so my advice to you, John, you're 18. Yeah. You look like 26. Anyway. I get, okay. I get that a lot, yeah. I do get that a lot. I am 18, though. Okay. So basically, subscribe to my channel, yeah? And I go live now and again here, there. Each, each week, I probably go live about three times, whatever. This is the hardcore live, the arena. But most of the time, we're just chilling. And come and join the chat and just hang about, man. And you got questions, people can answer in the chat, I can answer. Just come pick up, just hang around the community, dude. And you, and any questions you've got, just present them. Okay. All I'm right. I'm happy to do that. I, you know, but before I, I will head off in a minute, I know there's people waiting. But I will just say as well, thank you for being, you know, you've been courteous. You haven't really interrupted me. You've, you know, a good, proper, nice, healthy, friendly discussion, um, which is, you know, 
hard to come by sometimes. Thank you as well, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but this is what we try to do. I mean, look, I like to think we're like a kind of mirror. So if someone comes out as stupid, we're going to make them look yeah. stupid. Okay, we're going to show them the stupidity. But you came sincere, man. All right, you came with a weird Darth Vader flex, but it was what it was. But it's nice to see you, John. Very nice to meet you. And um, I think you'll become a Muslim man. Just, just keep following the logical path. Mm -hmm. Ask your questions. Do you get me? And uh, I'll, 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 you know, look into this in the future. I mean, I, when I left the church, I had a brief look into Islam, but I definitely didn't get a great um, example of it from the people I spoke to. Um, you've definitely changed my view on Islam quite a lot. Um, you know, and also, you know, if you guys, um, assuming based on your accents, Grew up speaking English as a first language or learned it quite young. Who? Yeah, it's not my first language, but I did learn it quite young. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm English. Learned, like, you've, you've either been speaking it from birth or speaking it for a very long time. Like it, if you you know learn Arabic, that's you know commendable at least. Uh, yeah, subhanallah. I was going to say you respect. Well, people are are you a gamer? Uh, my gamer. Yeah, I play games. Yeah. What was your favorite game? Um, there's a, a game called uh, Deep Rock Galactic. What? A game called Deep Rock Galactic. It's not very popular, but... Deep Rock Galactic? Some... What do you think of games like Ark Survival and uh, things like that? I've, I've played those as well, yeah. Okay. I've got a gaming channel, you know that? I, I didn't know that. I, as I say, my, my friend just sent me this uh, just, just today. Okay, so I've got a gaming channel called Hamza Gaming Flex, where we do live stream gaming. At the moment, I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy. But I'm starting a new game very no soon. Way, really? Me too, dude. Is it Hogwarts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are you up to? What part are you up to? Uh, I'm on I'm level 18 right now. And actually, my wife and I play it together, dude. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm, dude. I'm at level 20, 25 at the moment. We're about to crush it. We're about to crush it. <laughs> uh, oh, man, you should come and hang around the gaming channel, man. You should yeah, man, I'm down, man. I'm totally down. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. And you, you come, you come join us as well, Dar uh, Darren. John. Darren's my name. All right. Anyway. Yeah, All right, his name's Darren. That's why we mess with him. Thank you. Take care. Conversation. Thank you very much. Uh